helping us to do this. Hi, I am here with Dr. Philomena Trindade, and we're going to be talking about her upcoming uh, lectures at EHS 2019. We're, we've been talking about endocrine disruptors, and Dr. Trindade, would you please help us understand, you know, as healthcare providers, what we're really missing when we're looking at patients and we don't look at their environmental exposures or test for their environmental exposures? Well, I'm, I think that we often forget about that gene environment interaction. We're so focused on, you know, this, this could be genetic or they could have a, a genetic predisposition and not really about the part that is more due to the environment because we're a product of the environment really interacting with our genes. But as Bruce Ames has said, it's really more like 18%, 18 to 20%, I should say, due to gen genetics. And then the other 78, 82% is really due to what's going on in our environment. And I didn't learn this in medical school. I think it's still not being taught in medical school. I feel like we've sort of missed out. We forget about how huge you know, that contribution can be and how we really need to be considering it because we are really what we have been exposed to up until today or the time at which you're seeing your patient. Right. Now, you're going to be talking specifically about insulin resistance, diabetes, you know, and we're really facing a, I think it's a pretty serious epidemic of 50% of our population being insulin resistant. And 30% of our population is now known to have uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, whether they're diagnosed or not. Now, you're going to be addressing this. What are healthcare providers going to find out from your talk um, that will kind of lead them into this field of really uh, being able to focus on environmental exposures and, you know, insulin resistance? Right. Well, I think first and foremost, um, I'm going to really drill home the point that insulin resistance, impaired glucose tolerance, prediabetes, di diabetes, and I'm particularly focusing on type 2, is totally reversible. But we need to find that underlying root cause or root causes mm -hmm. in order to work harder to try and reverse it. And first of all, I want them to get a good understanding of the fact that it's not whether you have it or not phenomenon which I still see a lot of my conventional colleagues doing that. In terms of, let's say someone is diagnosed with fatty liver or even non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or prediabetes. Instead of saying, let's be aggressive, let's reverse this, they're really looking at, well, let's make sure this doesn't progress. And that is absolutely the wrong thing to do because more and more we're finding people earlier on that spectrum in terms of insulin resistance, prediabetes, that may not progress to full-blown diabetes, but yet, they're having the same side, side effects. They're having the same consequences because it's all about the either elevated glucose or even just elevated insulin of itself, which can be very inflammatory. So I want to focus on that continuum and then all the things that contribute to that, either whether it's through a direct effect on the pancreatic beta cell or maybe perhaps an indirect effect through the gut microbiota that can then lead to insulin resistance type 2 diabetes. Right. And this is what I think, uh, you know, in my own experience when I lecture that healthcare providers are completely missing, that the toxicants are directly toxic to the pancreatic beta cells. And just Absolutely. by putting people on a ketogenic diet, you're not addressing that direct toxicity to the pancreatic beta cell. Therefore, there's only a very limited extent to which you can uh, reverse that insulin resistance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And just like you mentioned, you know, with a ketogenic diet, which now has become a little bit of a fad, and I'm not speaking against it because I think mm -hmm. for the appropriate um, problem and with someone who is well prepared, it can be very efficient. But what you're doing is you're creating more reactive intermediates. You're creating more toxins and you're, you're liberating more toxins in a sense from the, the fat when you're going on a ketogenic diet. So it's really important that patients are prepared and that providers know that they need to be prepared if that's the route that they're going to take in terms of treatment. Because again, it's all about trying to lower that toxin load. And first figuring out where the toxins are coming from because we have so many toxins that it's difficult at times for us to figure out, but there are others that we can actually pinpoint to, you know, uh, a root cause or a root foundation. Mm -hmm.
right. that we can reverse and address. Right. And we will have one of the top global researchers on BPA, Dr. Frederick von Saul. You're going to meet him and you're going to get to, to listen to him really explain this to us in graphic detail. So I'm, I'm excited for you two to meet and to exchange ideas. And I'm also very excited. I've, I've seen your estrogen uh, metabolism talk before, and I'm very excited for our attendees to really see the brilliance in that, in that explanation and that talk. So I'm looking very much uh, forward to having you at EHS 2019 coming up in April. And um, I, I hope to see all of the healthcare providers that are listening to our discussion there as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Trinidad. Thank you. It's going to be an honor. Take care.